I'm with Keith Skiop, the uh, Chief Executive of uh, Standard Life Aberdeen. Keith, great to see you today. Everybody's talking about ESG at the moment, uh, reaching a pivot point on the back of the coronavirus crisis. What's your take on that? Uh, thank you, Daniel, and a real pleasure to, uh, to be with you. Um, I think my take is we're beyond the tipping point, and ESG is rapidly moving into mainstream. So why do I say that? You know, I've had 20 years talking about this stuff, and then suddenly in 2019, the demands we started to see from clients, from policymakers, from broader society really started to, uh, to increase. And if you look at the history of what has pushed ESG forward, steely steps have usually been formed in the fiery furnace of corporate failure brought on either by recession or some deeper crisis. Now, it's absolutely clear to me that the pandemic is going to push us even further into the mainstream. We already have, I think, something well over half of our clients by AUM signed up to uh, the PRI. And if you look at the impact of the pandemic that is going to create a crisis, that is going to generate corporate failure, that is going to lead to us thinking about how we re-equitize and move debt uh, into, uh, into equity. And you also think about uh, the societal issues associated with you know, the impact um, of the pandemic on uh, the less well-off in society and on the BAME community, and you look at the events that are going on in the United States at the moment, it's quite clear to me that there's a huge opportunity for ESG and all the good things that go with it to become mainstream. So I think it's really important that the industry recognizes that and takes advantage of the opportunity, because I do think we have moved beyond the tipping point the opportunity is now. We're in the midst of a short-term crisis, uh, but we need to think long-term. How do we reconcile the two? Um, I think uh, in, in, in several ways. So uh, you know, I've always argued that uh, ESG should be at the center of your investment process. And it isn't just about equities, it should be extended to other uh, asset classes where investors own securities that, 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 that corporates issue. Um, I think the thing that connects the short term with the long term is to recognize that what really good ESG does is it mitigates some of the risks associated with a company's business model and its viability. And actually, if you can dampen the volatility of the stock price by avoiding the big impact uh, of a, 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 a crisis, then actually that's to the benefit of the returns in the portfolio over a longer period of time. And I think one of the things we are seeing, we've certainly seen in our shop, and I think we're seeing across the industry, is an increasing recognition that if you do ESG right and it's embedded in your portfolios, then clients really don't have to give up uh, a, uh, a return. There's not necessarily a return discount uh, in the short run associated with uh, that, uh, that performance. So essentially, I think that um, you know, this is a means by which you can improve long-term uh, performance by dampening short-term uh, short volatility. What's the message to clients at this time? Um, business as usual, uh, pretty much. Uh, clients like us are all uh, connecting in different ways during um, the lockdown um, that uh, we really do have ESG at the center of our portfolios. We're aware that after this deep recession, there is going to be a recovery. And to get uh, a good recovery and reduce economic scarring, 
um, we are going to see the deployment of, I think, more equity capital. I think you're going to be looking at re-equitization and that uh, actually these ESG uh, characteristics really need to be at the center of that. The feedback we're getting from clients is they're very positive about that. They want to see that. It is certainly the case that the pandemic has put inequality on their minds. They want to see how companies behave and how they come through the crisis. And of course, uh, the really interesting thing is the focus on climate change uh, and the need for a carbon transition, uh, if anything, I think has, uh, has, has, has increased. So I think the asset management side and the asset owners are really pretty much joined up on, 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 on what needs to be done here. Stepping back a bit, what does the asset management industry look like going forward, assuming we get through this? Um, I, I think asset, the asset management industry um, needs to be at the center of providing uh, the finance uh, for recovery and working with our clients, the asset owners, to make sure that we deliver not only returns that, 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 that help them deliver their liability profile, but we do so in an increasingly sustainable way. I think that's incredibly important if interest rates are very low and returns are very uh, compressed. I think you'll see an industry that has to engage much more with policymakers in order to make sure that ESG and responsible investing gets embedded at the heart of that uh, recovery uh, process. So I think one of the things the industry is going to find is the spotlight uh, shines uh, much more brightly uh, on, uh, on the industry. Now, some people are comfortable with that, others less so. But I think one of the things we are going to have to do is connect our fiduciary responsibilities with ESG sustainability and show that the asset management industry can be a force uh, for, uh, for good. So uh, I actually do think, certainly for active uh, asset managers, there's an awful lot of opportunity here for us to be seen to practice uh, what we've pretty much preached for the last 20 years. Keith, uh, um, thank you for your time today. Thank you so much.